Hello people of Travis's YouTube. Today I am going to be showing you how to take a spinny round thing off of the frame of the thing that goes down the road that Travis rides on. <clears throat> so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get some sort of tool, right? Some sort of tool. You're going to want to touch this metal thingy. You're going to turn it. Whichever way it loosens, you're going to turn it. And then you're going to disconnect the weird metal chained uh, ringy thingamabob off of the big spiky scary circle. Uh, and then you just take it off. So. All joking aside, we are going to be doing exactly what Amanda said. We are going to be replacing the cog today. So that entails taking the rear wheel off, putting the cog on with a lock ring, using the tools to do so, and that is going to go on the other side of the fixed gear uh, flip-flop hub. So you have two types of hubs. You have one that has uh, a fixed gear cog on both sides and one that just has one on one side and then a free wheel on the other just like this. So here's an example of the flip-flop hub that I currently have on the bike and it is set up for two fixed gear cogs. So you have a cog is already installed on this side with a lock ring and on this side as well we have this cog that we're putting on and it'll be here at the end of the video. Now here's an example of a flip-flop hub that has a fixed cog on one side with the lock ring and then on the other side, you have a free will uh, on that. So you can't put two fixed cogs on this hub. You can do a free will and you can do a fixed cog. So whether you want a single speed with a bike with a free will or if you want a fixed gear, you can do that accordingly. The downside to this setup is if you are trying to run two different cogs, you're going to have to bring a cog and a lock ring and you're going to have to loosen up and re-tighten on a different tooth cog, which is unfortunate when you're trying to make quick changes or that really takes a, a lot of stress on the threads and on the lock ring um, of both parts, the hub or the cog and lock ring. All the threads, multiple uses on there, just always you know anything could happen and it creates more stress so this would be more for the person um, or a company like this came factory on my fixed gear to provide a an item or a rear setup to where they could pick one or the other and go with it to where what I'm trying to do is have one on each side to where I know I'm only going to ride fix I'm not going to ride with the free wheel and I can uh, just pick accordingly to the terrain and to the ride that I'm wanting to do. Let's get into this install and talk about the items needed to complete it. First, you need a cog. This is what a cog looks like if you haven't seen one yourself. It's a fixed gear cog. It has threads on the inside right in here and it has two sides, one with a raised edge and one with a uh, flat side there. So this is a 16 tooth. I'm currently running a 17, so I want to change to a lower gear ratio, which would be a 16. And you need a lock ring. So here's a lock ring, and it'll normally have slots for the spanner tool, which I'm about to show you. It has threads on the inside, and it'll be paired with the cock. Now you're gonna need a tool to get the tire off. So um, if you have a quick release, you won't need any tools. Uh, most fixed gears that I know of use a 15 millimeter. So having a 15 millimeter wrench, not only in your tool bag, but at home is a great necessity. I would go out and buy one just for that. And for the, for the cog and for um, the lock ring, you're going to need either this bottom portion or this side of it is a chain whip. So this attaches and wraps around your cog to tighten it, something like that. And then the other side is what's called like a spanner wrench and, a, uh, and you will have that and it hooks into your cog, I mean into your lock ring, sorry. And that's what you use to tighten the lock ring. 
So those are all the tools that you're gonna need and it's a very simple task. If you don't wanna get your hands dirty like mine are right here, you might wanna put on gloves. Um, a lot of the chain grease and stuff is pretty hard to get off. But let's head over to the bike and start with the install. Now to start this off, we're going to be using our 15 millimeter wrench to take off our two axle nuts on either side. So let's go ahead and get those off of there. You want to loosen them up just a little bit and now we need to take the chain off. So we're going to slide the rear wheel forward and with your front chain ring right here we're going to move it over, spin, you can actually depending on your chain length you could probably do it without um, having to spin it. And then you're going to take it off the front, take it off the back, slide your rear wheel out of the stays. And there you go, the tire is, the tire and wheel, the wheel is removed. As you can see on this hub, we have a cog installed here with the lock ring. And on the other side of this flip flop hub, we have threads to go ahead and do that as well. So this is where we're going to be placing our cog and lock ring. All right, so I have the wheel set up in a chair here just so it would be easier for y'all to see me demonstrate putting on the cog and the lock ring. Uh, this is the side that we're gonna be putting it on. It has the open threads. The other side looked identical to this before I put on the cog and lock ring. You're gonna have two sets of threads here, one with the larger diameter and one with the smaller diameter. The one with the larger diameter, that's what you're going to use to put your cog on. So the cog has a raised lip on one side that's going to go towards the inside. And this cog thread, you want to spin it backwards just a little bit to make sure it's flat so you don't cross thread it. But it is going to be regular thread, so righty tighty, just like we learned. And you're just going to want to make sure that there's nothing impeding it, that it, sleeds, that, it, that it spins on perfectly normal and fine. If it hiccups or if it tries to cross thread, make sure the threads are clean um, before you put it on. And if it's not going, definitely back up before you cram it on. And you're just going to get it hand tight. Now we're going to use our chain whip, which I showed you earlier. So this is the chain whip here. You're going to place the chain whip on top of the cog. Let it sit in these top three here. Wrap the, the chain around it, and then you're going to pull up into the direction where we're going to tighten, just like that. Now, you can't go this way with the chain whip. It seems like you would be able to, but you can't push down with it. So if you pulled up in this manner, it would just be taking it off. I like to get this as tight as I physically can get it. So uh, put it on there, pull up as tight as I can. If it's easier for you, you can do this operation upside down, still going in the same direction. So you can go this way. Just watch your fingers and watch the spokes. And you're just gonna push down and tighten. as tight as you can like that. Now you're gonna take it off. So we have that installed and tight. Now we are going to need the lock ring. And the lock ring has writing on here showing you which direction is out and which direction it is to actually lock it. Now this is gonna be left hand thread, which means you're gonna be tightening it to the left for it to get tight. That's so it's opposite of the cog and um, I just actually dropped the ring here but it's opposite of the cog so that way they tighten against each other when you're pedaling and you want to make sure that this is nice and tight as well so when you try to skid or, or uh, back pedal to brake that it doesn't slip and your cog slip which has happened to me a lot so that's why I like to get it as tight as possible. So just before I tighten this, I'm gonna check one more time and loosen this lock ring up. I'm gonna just check one more time that I got um, 
this cog tight. I always like to do that because it's kind of annoying to go back. So that's as tight as I can get it there. Now we're going to go to the left on this ring. And then you're going to place your, your spanner right here, this tooth, into the locking ring teeth there. And watch your knuckles on this if it slips off, which it has happened for me in the past. It definitely will hurt. So you'll just tighten that down as hard as you can. Kind of get in the best place you can move the wheel around for better leverage. And I normally just hold with this hand to make sure it doesn't slip off. And then put this hand on the as far out as I can to get the most leverage. And kind of keep my fingers, uh, my fingers and thumb clear. All right, and that's as tight as I can get it there. So now we have the cog and the lock ring installed just like it was installed on this side. And I've been running that, it's been working fine. So this will be our 16 tooth, which I'm super excited about. Get a little lower gear, faster uh, speeds on the normal cadence. And let's go ahead and get it back installed. We are back over at the bike now. We have the 16 tooth cog and lock ring installed. So now what we're going to do is lift our chain up. We're gonna get this wheel put back on. So you lift the chain up and you'll put the cog inside the chain here and make sure your, your tire and wheel are inside the, the rear triangle. And you can just go ahead and put it on right here and you'll lift it up and you'll get these started back in the stays. You'll get the axle on the stays. So there we go. So we have it just sitting here, but the chain is obviously still off the front chain ring. So we're going to come over, grab the chain, and just, you want to hold this because with it being fixed, it's going to hurt your fingers or, or anything if you get the chain um, in there. And you can just lightly spin it until it fully comes on. All right, so we have the chain fully installed. We have the rear wheel. It's in the right, uh, it's in the right spot and direction. And you want to now re-tighten down your axle nuts. So you want to pull this out at an even tension, and you want to look up into this gap right here. So you're going to want to look on either side of the tire and make a correct gap. And also, you want to have a correct tension. And a correct tension on the chain would be an inch of movement up and down. I like it tighter than better, but if you get it way tight, then um, you're not going to be able to go as fast. So if you pull back on here just by your hands, get it close, and then you can tighten down one nut before the other um, if you need to to create that perfect tension. And sorry about all the noise. There's a guy mowing the lawn outside so I apologize about that but you're just gonna pull it out like this tighten this side a little bit I'm checking the gap between the bottom rails and the and the tire and the gap up here um, in the top of the triangle so let's tighten this side and then we'll get this side tightened So it looks good right there. Let's uh, tighten this a little bit more. All right, now I'm gonna check my uh, chain tension. So I have about a inch of movement there. It's not too loose. It's not wobbling all over the place. You wanna make sure that you rotate it a little bit, check it again. It's a little bit tighter there. Keep going, check it here. So it's a little bit tighter, but it still has movement up and down, no problem. And in some cases, if your chain rings are not machined or made correctly, if they're a cheaper chain ring, then it'll be tighter in some areas than in others. But as far as this, it seems perfectly fine. So we're gonna finish tightening up these nuts. 
and checking to see if it's a top or bottom. Give it a good old spin. And there we go. The tension's great. It's spinning fine. Nothing's hanging up. The back wheel, if you turn it, it's turning the whole drivetrain. And that's what we want with the fixed gear. Thank y'all so much for watching my tutorial on how to change the cog. I hope you learned a lot. And in doing so, there's some other things that you might have learned, like taking the wheel on and off, setting the chain, chain tension, anything like that. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. If you want to see more bike videos and videos of this kind, hit that thumbs up. If you have any questions or maybe want to suggest another how-to video concerning a bike or any of anything involving bicycling, any gear, bike, equipment, whatever, then hit, the, uh, hit it in the comments below. Type that out. Let me see it. Um, I look at that all the time and I will be willing to make more videos on specific things if y'all would like that in the future. So thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out some of these videos right here and uh, greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much.